Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to see how we can identify the currently executing queries on the SQL Server database and also if we can identify the longest running queries. So let's get started. To achieve this, we are going to use a dynamic management view from SQL Server. It's a system view. It's called the DM execute request. This is going to give us a list of all the executing queries on SQL Server. So just doing a select from this view. Test.dm underscore exec underscore request is going to give us a list of queries. So you can see that there are 71 rows that came in the output. Now for most of them, you can see that the SQL handle is null and the command type is either task manager, some parallel task or something which are either in the sleeping or background status. So some system processes that are running. But if we go and scroll down, we will see that for this one query, there's a SQL handle which is defined. Now the SQL handle is an identifier of your SQL query that you are executing. And the command type you can see is a select query. So this is the same query that we executed just now. It has identified this query. And this is a query. These are the kinds of queries that we are interested in. Now, once we have this query and we know how to identify the query by the SQL handle, we want the actual text of the query. So just knowing that a select command is running will not help solve our purpose because there might be many select commands running, but we need to identify which all queries are running. So to do that, what we're going to do is going to make use of another system function. So I'm going to have to provide the SQL handle, which is the output from this query to that SQL function. So to do that, I'm going to use my cross apply operation because you cannot use a join when you're joining to a table valued function that is going to be a table valued function. So we just say cross apply and we mention that function which is sys.dm execute SQL text. And now we need to pass a parameter variable a parameter value to this function which is going to be a SQL handle so we will just say SQL handle and now we are done now if we execute it what is going to happen is it is going to give us the output for this select the text for this select query so you can see that at the end you have the text from the select query which is the exact text that we executed right now now just for the sake of this example let's go and execute some more queries so i'm going to run this query this is going to be running on the adventure works database and you can see that i've defined a join on one equal to one so this is going to be running forever. So just for testing this, I'm just going to execute this. I'm just going to execute this and you will see that the query is going to be in the executing phase. Now I'm going to go back to the query that we just wrote. I'm just going to execute this and you will see that now that select another select statement has been identified. If we go towards the end, we can see this query that we just wrote. Now, this might not be enough for us. What we are interested in is finding out how many queries are running and which of them is taking the longest time to run. So we need to identify some column that can give us the execution time. So if you just keep on scrolling, you can see that there are multiple columns. There is a column called CPU underscore time. This is going to let us know how long the query has been running for. Another interesting column could be the start time column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add this column at the beginning so that we can see that. So I'm just going to say CPU underscore. So there's an underscore here, CPU underscore time for that query. And I'm going to, let's say, bring the text as well in the front. So text. And then we can have all the remaining columns. Now, uh, if we execute this query, you will see that you have got the CPU time over here. And now just to identify what we need to do is we need to use an order by statement 
on this column so we can order by in a descending fashion and that should serve the purpose for us now you can see that there's some syntactical errors so what we need to do is first define some aliases because it is not able to identify the column it is saying it's an ambiguous column i'm just going to put some aliases request rsq and for uh, text we can just say txt and then we're just going to define here req dot cpu underscore time and that should fix this issue now i'm just going to order it in a descending manner so i'm just going to execute it and you will get that query that is taking the most amount of time at the top so now if you have multiple queries and you're just trying to figure out which might be the longest running query which is making all the other process slow then this might be for you and you can use this query to identify that now this is a very straightforward approach there are different functions available so there is a vast available of functions which can help you identify multiple things for example maybe they, uh, there are some queries producing a log or something so that also can be used there's another function to identify that so there are multiple functions that can be used so this is a very useful feature that SQL Server provides and you can use these queries to just find out uh, these simple things like the executing queries and the longest running queries if you like this video, then please do not forget to like, comment and share this video. And also please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we will be posting many more videos soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.